And so please chat with me in the chat and let me know if you have questions or if you've tried this technique yourself. So teaching all about palm painting today. Uh, first thing I'd love in the comments is if you guys have heard about palm painting, if you've heard about this trend, if it's reaching the salons where you guys are. I'm here based in LA. I work at 901 Salon in West Hollywood. And this trend actually we learned about um, coming from Europe, which is where a lot of our trends happen um, with COVID life and all of that. You know, we've had postpones on fashion week and things like that, but I feel like all of it's coming back and it's been super exciting. So working with this new trend palm painting and I want to share with you guys how easy and how quick this technique can be. So this is my beautiful model, Stephanie. She's a friend of mine. She's got the perfect hair for this technique, you guys. She's got a lot of hair on her head, but her strands are very fine in density. So that's kind of what this technique is best for. Palm painting is meaning we're literally using zero tools other than our lightener as our tool. So, you know, obviously we'll use some clips to get some uh, sectioning done and all of that. But this technique is all about your creative and artistic eye. So I'm excited to share that with you guys. Um, starting off, hopefully by now you guys have heard about Defy Damage by Joyco. This is a bond building um, product and it is strengthening as we kind of work. We are just short burst spraying this into the hair, especially on these pre-lightened ends, you guys. She hasn't had her hair done since, I think you said June mm -hmm. stuff, right? So it's been a while. So obviously we have all this virgin hair here and these pre-lightened ends. By now the toners have faded out and all of that. So I really want to make sure I'm going in with my keratin bond building system here and getting right in onto those ends. What I love about the Defy Damage, if you guys don't know about this one yet, is I don't put it into my product, obviously, I put it right into the hair. So then I don't have to mess with my developers and I don't have to change what I'm doing with my coloring system um, because of this product. So it really has helped me just kind of give like that extra little love to my client's hair. And I like to be able to chit chat with them and tell them what I'm doing, how I'm making, and ensuring that their hair is super healthy um, while we're giving them a new coloring service. Sometimes even you can use it for right before a haircut too and just give them a little treatment. So after that you just brush through the hair as long as the brush is gliding right through their hair you know you have enough product on there. If for some reason you're going through and it gets a little bit stuck it means you didn't quite get enough saturation of the product. It really should coat the hair and create like an immediate shine and then you know you have good all over saturation. Okay, let's move into sectioning here. And then Serena, has anybody said whether or not they know about palm painting? A couple of people have heard of it, but they've never tried it. Cool, okay, good, I'm excited then. So the world's easiest sectioning, at least is how I am doing this. So Stephanie flips her hair from side to side. She does a lot of up in a bun, and if she's gonna part on the side, she's on her left side. So what I'm going to do with the sectioning here, I'm just going to tilt down, is just making sure that when I grab my top section, I'm literally using my fingers for this because I want it to be undone. I'm going to make sure I'm swooping just past her part line on this side, and then same thing, giving equal balance to the other side of her head. So it's going to be a little bit more than just a mohawk. I'm kind of scooping as I go, and I'll kind of pull this tight so it's out of the way and you guys can see. Um, the thing that's kind of fun about this sectioning is the goal is for it to not be perfect, right? I think like in the hair world and in the education world, we get so focused on sectioning being perfect and precise, but this technique is all about fluidity. So I want to keep that same thing happening with my sectioning. It makes the application easier for me if I'm not so focused on where I'm placing each strand. Okay, so now I'm kind of looking at the density here and trying to figure out, all right, how much do I really want to add with this? So I'm going to do one more little scoop because I want to be able to have, again, some more control through here. And so I'm just taking out that bulk section right in the middle, just another little scoop. Again, you can see it's not perfect. That's a good thing. Okay, and kind of clip that up and out of your way. 
All right, the rest of this we're gonna kind of leave down to start and everything sort of, I'm gonna start with the bulk right in the back. Again, because I want, knowing I'm doing all this is gonna be open air, okay, why this is processing. So if it sits through the back longer, that's okay. And I know that this is a stronger section of her hair through here. So I'll kind of let that be my good um, starting point. The other option would be if you were just doing a retouch with this palm painting, then you wouldn't even do this section. You could kind of start in the front, but we're doing an all over thing for you guys today. Okay, so I have this back section. Again, I'm gonna use my finger, okay? And I'm going to kind of do a little zigzagging type sectioning through here, okay? Again, making sure I don't have too much bulk, but I don't want anything to be perfect. Can you guys see through there? And I'm using, again, my finger in order to get that. This will be our initial section where we start, and I'll clip that out of my way. So the tools I have with me are my, you wanna show over here, Serena? I've got my Blonde Life with both of my lighteners, okay? I'm using the cream here with my 10 volume. And then I'm using the powder lightener here with my 20 volume, okay? And the reason that I'm using the two different lighteners is for a couple reasons. So one cream lightener and powder in the Joyco line specifically still gives you nine levels of lift regardless of which one you're using, okay? but you're gonna have more oil-based products in your cream lighteners, and so it's just gonna be a little bit gentler of a lift, and then you're gonna have more power, um, and I call it power, it's still nine levels of lift, but I feel like I get a little bit, like packs a little bit more punch with my powder lighteners. So multiple, multiple clients, I will use the different lighteners you guys and again I feel like it's one of those products that that's a tool right for us and it's so so important to be able to know those tools and your developers and what they can kind of do for you so make sure you are playing around with those and trying different ways to achieve these looks with your clients all right so here we go I am starting with my powder lightener in the back and I'm also keeping a towel next to me. You can keep it wet or dry, whatever is easier for you. And we're gonna be picking up pieces really that I just wanna see have a little bit more punch to them. Okay, again, I'm using no tools. If you can see, I'm using my fingers here. And I'm kinda smudging right at the root or right at where I want that melted point. And then I'm gonna be pulling down through the ends with my hands. And I'm using, I got two gloves on. And the other thing to remember here when you're grabbing your sectioning, there's not really like a right or a wrong way to do it. I'll take some thin and I'll take some a little bit thicker and then I'll just vary where I start my line. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit higher on this one on both sides and then feather that in. And kind of pushing that up the strand through this back side because she's so dark she rare, she barely has any pre lightens ends through here i'm using that 20 because with the powder because i just again need to pack a little more punch in there so we'll go a little bit skinnier with our next one and this is where your creative eye just kind of comes in this technique is not about a big transformation this technique is all about creating some beautiful sun-kissed pieces through the hair. It's a very quick and easy method. And it's just one of those, it's just another way to kind of switch up your work and be able to offer your clientele something else. I find that I will use this a lot on my fine-haired girls for one. Um, in LA, blondes are such a big deal, right? It's like we do them constantly. I feel like ever since um, kind of more just education about blondes has, has been available. Blondes all across the world are getting more and more beautiful um, with all the toning techniques we have, with the, the lifting tools that we have. Um, and it's just sort of another way to kind of still introduce blonde into your clientele, but give them a different option, right? 
I feel like so much of what we do is is just that and it's kind of how we keep our clientele just excited about our work what we're doing the education that we're learning so trying out these different things being here with me on this live seeing how different stuff works and reacts is such a huge part of what we do as artists okay so you can see here I kind of have picked up a strand that has some more pre lightened ends so I'm gonna switch and now I'm gonna use my cream on that and like how fast was that right to be able to use two different products on one strand I just want to treat those ends a little bit gentler than that have already been pre lightened and I'm sticking with skinny pieces through this back side I want a little something that when she pulls her hair up you can see a little dimension but again nothing that is going to be too heavy for Stephanie she doesn't like to get her hair done very often. Well, I shouldn't say doesn't like to. She doesn't have the time to. <laughs> Stephanie is so busy. She runs her own um, events company, and she's incredible at what she does. She doesn't make the time for herself. So mm -hmm. a technique like this is gonna give Te is gonna give Stephanie a little beautiful refresh, but it's gonna be something again that she can wear for months and months, and still have those beautiful sparkles in her hair. Going a little bit higher, spin this so you guys can see on this hairline up in here. And a little bit wider, so I have a little more impact on that piece. And we'll let that fall. Okay, now if for any reason you're worried about any bleeding happening, um, I will use these films. I don't know if you guys have seen these films before. I believe it's like color track that use them. You can lay those over if you're worried about any sort of um, bleeding or anything like that. We're going so light with our product, I'm really not too worried about it on Stephanie's hair, but I just wanna show you guys as an option to be able to drop that down. Okay, I'm gonna grab this next section in here, spin her a little bit more, and I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna do a random little zigzaggy pattern, pull that out of my way, check your density, see if you have enough kind of happening through here and another little zigzag type pattern. For those of you that are, you know, like to stay very extremely organized, I think a lot of people who do education, they like to stay really clean and organized. You can for sure use your weaving comb if you wanna do that through here. Um, honestly, either way, however you're comfortable with it. Um, I like to just really kind of move the hair with my fingers. I just feel like you know, we do so much structured work that I really like to switch it up when I'm doing this technique. Okay, again, smudging that in, and sometimes you can go higher on the strand here and then leave that lower. And just make sure you have good saturation all the way through the ends. And we'll kind of let that fall. The other thing I love about this technique too is I love to be able to see the work, right? Like as I'm going, I can really just be like, oh, right here. You know, foiling is amazing. Um, and obviously we get so many other techniques done with foiling. Um, but little steps like this, I feel like is also fun as the artist to watch it kind of happen right before your eyes. More like a balayage, like when we're doing our balayage work. And again, be mindful, you guys, when you are choosing developers for this look. Okay, so knowing that her hair is fine, it's like, okay, in the foil, it can probably handle one thing. Out of the foil with open air, I can bump this up a little bit and not be afraid that I'm gonna do anything too damaging on Stephanie's hair, right? Like I can, the 20 on this back here sitting for a while is gonna be completely okay knowing that that it's oxidizing much quicker being open air. Kind of still just really melting that in and working down through those ends. I still feel pretty confident with how dark these ends are to be able to put the pull the 20 all the way through. But on some of those where you start to get a little bit lighter, you know, sort of pay attention to that mixing it up with that cream. 
Okay, we're still kind of just doing, I'm going high, low, high, low with this. Really just melting with my fingers. And even on a flat, more of like a flat strand like this, I'll take one side a little bit higher and you're still kind of creating those little V shapes, just like we do when we balayage. We're just using our, our palms and our fingers. Maybe this should be called finger painting, but maybe that's too much like what our kids do. But hey, it's kind of like that. Taking, again, kind of go, go a little bit higher and then I'll show you guys my final pattern on this side once we get through all of that. Um, those of you that work with like a clay lightener, this would be another awesome time to use your clay lighteners. Just again, adjust your developer accordingly. Remember when we're working with such fine strands like this, as far as like the sectioning itself, it's not going to need as much, right? You're going to need the same saturation so that you have even saturation everywhere. Um, but you're just not going to, you know, I'm really the, the thickness of this strand I don't have to go so intense. That's the other thing I love this for with fine hair is I really feel like there's zero damage from this and depending on how light you want this to get too. I'm really just looking for a couple levels like a shift for Stephanie's hair but when I'm doing this on a blondie blonde I really want to make those little skinny pieces pop a little bit more. Kind of just go through and Pick up and grab through here. And just working high and low, high and low as much as you can. Really smudging that in. And I'm putting the lightener on both sides of my fingers. So that way, as I'm going down the strand, I'm killing two birds with one stone, right? Saturating on both sides as I work down the hair. The other thing this technique is really, really great for is those youngins. I don't know if you guys have clients that are, you know, 13, 16, they're dying to color their hair, you know, their mom is fighting with them at the salon, no, please don't color your hair, you know, once you start, you can't go back. Well, this is a perfect technique for that client um, and something that I feel like you can kind of discuss with the parents and, you know, I kind of explained to them this has zero retouching that has to be done, right? And over time, these are just going to be these beautiful little sun kiss pieces that will just stay and remain through the ends and everything. Um, and I find that when I can kind of show these techniques to my clients, you know, so that I feel like that's another reason that's so important to have techniques on your Instagram, you guys, is to be able to share with your clientele Oh, look at what this kind of result can give you um, and sort of different options for your clients. So you can kind of see pattern in here. We're going high, low, high, low, high, kind of just we're continuing almost that zigzaggy vibe all the way throughout, even as I'm painting through and we already have the two sections done. It's super fast. Now through these next little corner pieces that I have, this is where we almost are connecting to the front a little bit more. So I'm gonna just go a tiny bit heavier and I'll show you guys what I mean by that. So I'm gonna grab my section in here. This really doesn't need color up through the top, but I do want more color to pop through the ends. So this is where I'm gonna take my 20 again. Because she still has so much dark back here, as we work towards the front, we'll start working more with that cream. and really just kind of feathering that up and in. But now this is where you can also offer like a tip out situation. Okay, so through, and I'll probably end up doing more of that through the front as well, so that remains nice and bright. Now that we've skipped one, we have some depth, so it's all about like where the hair is laying, right? Now I wanna go back in here and brighten up some towards the top. And again, this is what I love so much about having all the hair down because I can really see exactly where this is going to fall. You know, sometimes when we do our perfect sectioning, um, we do a lot of over directing. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, straight, harsh, like weave lines. 
and you know until you are you've really practiced for a long time it's like then you kind of know where those pieces are gonna fall but this to me is kind of the only way to get that true like sun-kissed look right because the hair you're just like oh it falls here I know it falls here this is how her hair was air dried when she came in so just kind of knowing that sort of stuff about your client's hair and seeing it okay so this is kind of a good example where this is my connecting piece here okay again I'm like right behind her ear I've placed quite a few decent highlights through there and now you can tell, here's her line from before. This is pretty much all previously lightened. So now I'm gonna do like a little teasing with my fingers, okay? Because I really just wanna pop what's already here. So it's just a slight little push with the fingers. And then we're gonna go in here with our 10 volume. This hair has already been lightened. Okay, so then we'll kind of, again, just feather that with this cream. And it's just one more way to ensure, I mean, you guys all know about teasing one more way to soften that line but what's so cool is i'm able to do that in two seconds with my fingers no tools and i'm going to get a beautiful soft result from it okay i'm going to split the difference between these two one will go forwards we'll do a high and we'll do a tip out there and again it's just because i'm visually looking to see where her hair is going to fall and on this new this one's all more dark except for here so i'm going to go switch back to my 20. Take that a little bit higher. And when you guys are first learning and, and practicing this technique, you can for sure do a tease on each of the strands if you want to. You know, um, I always love to grab a friend, grab a family member, kind of use them as my guinea pigs, right? Just like we did in beauty school. Every, anytime you're trying a new technique for the first time. So see, now I'm gonna switch to my cream. Um, and it's just gonna give it a little pop on those ends. It's gonna pull out any old toner that might be left. It's gonna help just brighten that. If I didn't even have to tone those ends would be so ideal. Okay, here's another one where I'm just gonna soften and I'm just gonna tip out. And this is kind of that connecting piece that's coming, those three pieces right there were all the connecting pieces right at her ear. You guys can kind of already see through there. Hopefully you can see that on camera, how this is starting to lift. You see how beautiful those little pieces are gonna be in there? I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and with such a quick application, this is a great little uh, easy maintenance kind of a look, right? Now when she comes back in the next time, I don't have to be stressed about Oh gosh, where did those pieces go? The ones I lightened before and, and what, um, you know, sort of trying to follow your same lines. This is not going to be that client. This is this client that you don't see for a while, right? So you really are just giving her those beautiful pops or it's your high maintenance blonde that comes in all the time. She's never blonde enough, right? But reality is her hair cannot be lightened in a foil to a level 10 every time she comes in, she just can't. So this might satisfy, hopefully, right? Satisfy some of those clients where if she comes in, you know, just give her a couple little palm painted pieces, give her a couple little skinny ones around her face and just treat it a little bit more gently. And then um, it sort of kind of appeases that, you know, client that's like, oh, every six weeks I need my blonde done. Um, Unless for some reason you have a client who's super, super dark at their base, then you might need to control that, just like we do with balayage, right? You need to control that in a foil more. But if you're just needing to give them some sun-kissed or pull out some old toner, it's another great way to do that. Where a lot of times, um, in LA we have really hard water. We have a lot of minerals in our water. That's gonna be my front connecting piece, if you guys can see that. So this is the one I'm going to soften. Um, so, sorry, back to the water. We have very, very hard water here. And a lot of times my blondes will come in and we'll just do like a, you know, like a clarifying shampoo, um, refresh their toner, or for those clients that are like addicted to their purple shampoo, 
all of those sorts of little things, you could do a clarifying wash for them and then a little poem painting. And it's just gonna help brighten and refresh and they're gonna feel good, their hair's still gonna be healthy. And then our connecting piece will take a little higher. Again, because now I'm starting to come around the face a little bit more, so I want these a little higher. And then add that tip out to connect. I love using the different lighteners as tools, you guys. It, it's, it's something that I do all the time. I teach on a lot. Um, I will mix up cream and powder on a lot of clients. Hairlines, I love using the cream. You know, in the back, I love using the powder. I'm gonna grab that guy again and do see how light this guy is here. He doesn't need much. So I really just wanna connect and make that sparkle a little bit more with the cream and the 10. You can also see if there's a client you're nervous about highlighting, this is a great way to get them started. I had a girl just uh, a few days ago that She's an uh, actress here in LA and um, does so much back and forth with her hair color that, I mean, she came in with these little broken front pieces. She's like, I don't know what to do. I have to be blonde for this next show I'm doing. Um, and so I just literally did cream all through the front, five volume. I really just wanted to get a sense. It was the first time I had done her hair. I really wanted to get a sense for what her hair could handle before, you know, I really went for it. And so the cream, I just feel like such a good tool for that. Okay, you guys can kind of see we're working through. I'll show you another little, sometimes if I'm going into a denser section, I'll use another little guy here and just give it a clip. Try not to clip on a highlighted piece, like clip above if you can and then you don't get any crease marks or anything. All right, let's drop to this section in here. Again, I'm gonna do one little zigzaggy straight across the back. Now, I'm not going for, a lot of times when, I, when I'm teaching a foiling technique, I like to leave here and, for, and leave the um, depth in there and then really only tip out. So you could do that if you had a client that didn't have quite as much grow out here, like you know maybe only in here. This area, I would only tip out. So that way she does create and have this depth in here because all of that depth is what makes all the light pop, right? But at this point, Stephanie's ready for some through here. She's got so much grow out happening. If I don't see her for another six months, she's gonna be way too dark through here and it's gonna look a little spotty. So I'm, it's time for a retouch on, on some of Steph's pieces here. So I'm gonna give her a little softening just with my fingers. And then I'm going to take my powder up in here and kind of still create that same vibe all the way down. So originally you guys, I think this technique was created and started by a hairstylist in London. Um, I absolutely love, love traveling the world and learning new techniques like this. Um, I think it's so cool to see how other artists tackle different, you know, um, how they, like we see results, right? And everyone's gonna kind of come to a different conclusion on how to get there. And I just love, I love that about what our, what our job is, right? And how artistic we can be. Um, I just think it's such a cool thing. So this has kind of been my spin on how I learned the palm painting. This has been like my takeaway from it and how I've found that I've been able to utilize it for my clientele. Now, when you get in there and you start trying different things, you might be like, oh, I actually like doing block palm painting or, you know, I like doing this only on blonde. Like there's different ways that this can all be used. Um, it just kind of playing with it, taking the time to try these different looks on your clients. Um, and hopefully we all figure out a way to kind of make trends work for you. Okay, so trends are gonna come and go. You know, we all saw that big chunky 
money piece thing come in quarantine. We saw fringe bangs. We saw all these different things. And I just want to encourage you guys to not feel pressured to ever do a trend. Number one, just because someone else is doing it, right? Or number two, something you're not comfortable with or doesn't fit your clientele, like who you really work on. Um, and I definitely found that with the money piece, the big chunky chunky one. I never once did it. And yes, you get pressured and you feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta keep up with this trend. People are wanting this. I need this on my page, whatever it is. But I really just wanna encourage you guys that when trends come and go, really stay true to who you are as an artist. And this palm painting, this is my take on palm painting. And this is how I know my clientele will be able to wear this and love it. Um, and it's how the trend is working for me. So I really just wanna encourage you guys with that um, to stay true to kind of who you are as an artist. Because let's be real, some of this stuff comes and you're just like, how in the world am I ever going to use that? You know, or you don't have, you're not comfortable using it. And that's okay. It's totally okay. We get asked a lot like from our PR team here in LA you know, can you talk trends? Can you talk this? Can you talk that? And I'm always very honest with them with the ones that I will talk about and I won't talk about. And I think that there's a place for, for that. Other artists, if other artists are doing, you know, more like block palm painting, because I've seen that before too, where they're taking almost like slices and they're palm painting all the way from root to end. So they get more of like an all over diffused look. And for me, this is where I have found using this technique is better. I am a little bit more of like a control freak where I don't want to have to worry about how that whole surface is lifting. I'd rather just put that in a foil and know I can control it in a foil. And for other people, they are fully confident doing that. So trying the different trends and making them work for you and you can absolutely still use this trend name. You can talk about it on your Instagram. You can tell your clients, oh, I learned this cool technique. And you make it your own. Okay, we're almost done with this kind of depth section. You're here, pulling that down. And then just giving a little love with the cream on the end. It's such a great way to clear out blonde too, you guys. Like, if Stephanie wanted to be more blonde, or if she was blonde too, I honestly could tip out all these ends with cream and five volume, and they would just be sparkling and beautiful. Oh, another fun little tip. Let's say you overtone your client, okay? And you're like, ooh, shoot, I got that a little bit. You know, I got the ends a little too dark or anything like that. You can kind of do this palm painting technique just even right at the bowl with five volume and bring back some of that sparkle too. It's kind of just being comfortable, taking your time on each little piece. He's like, yes, it's a very quick technique, but take your time. Like I'm really, it's very difficult to show you guys with my fingers, but I'm angling, right? So that way I'm only hitting the top of this strand and I'm still creating that little V. Can you see that in the oh, camera? Cool, okay. Hopefully you guys can see. And as, as that lightens a little bit more, you know, hopefully you guys can see where, and it's just, it's so fast, right? And then boom. Same thing, then we'll start to go a little, you can even go a little, start to go a little heavier. And I'm gonna take this one a little bit lower. This I still think can use a 20. You guys see how the, yes, there's some pre-lightened in there, but it is not at level nine or 10 yet. Some of my um, super fine girly girls, I can do this technique and I don't even have to tone them, which is like so great. If anything, I'll, sometimes I'll throw a clear over, really just to seal down that cuticle. I think clear is a very underused product. Um, yes, it can be great to like soften some toners 
or slow them down a bit for you, but I kind of like clear as like a shine. I would prefer to almost just mix my toners how I want them, right? So like if I want a level 10, let's use a level 10, not use a nine with clear. Um, and I think that's just because I'm really confident with the result of the Joyco toner, so I'm confident doing that. If you do have a color line you use that it it just it has too much pigment or um, you know the dye load is too much for what you're wanting, then you stick with what you know for sure. But specifically in the Joyco line, um, the clear I love as just a shine. The Luma Shine line is so shiny that I love it as like sort of that finishing touch. Okay, this one through the middle here, I feel like I have good depth going in here. I have a good bright piece coming up, so now I'm really just tipping. Again, it's all so, so visual. And hopefully you guys can see that. Again, I'm gonna do another little tip right through here. Still working in U's, right? Working in the shape of her head. And I think that's also so interesting is we do so much foiling based on horizontal lines um, or vertical lines, right? And we're working on a round surface. So I think that we have to do a lot of over correcting when we foil a lot. Um, and that's why I feel like to achieve, a, a truly achieve a sun-kissed look, it's very difficult to do with a foil placement. Okay, just kind of softening. So I want to bring this one a little bit higher up in here and get some of that little bit of that depth now that we're working on the round. Go through there. So I think on Stephanie, what I'll end up doing is probably just give her a little, if, I don't think she's gonna need a tap, to be honest, like this I think is going to, and we'll kind of go back and I'll check through the ends before we jump off, um, or underneath before we jump off the live. But I don't think she's gonna need a tap. I think we're just gonna do an all over gloss, again, just for that shine factor. But you can see like here, look how beautifully these are lifting and they're just these creamy, beautiful pieces kind of happening through there with a really soft melt at the top that I'm just gonna give them a little bit of a gloss with a 10, I think I'd probably do like a 10 NW with like a splash of 9V. And the only reason I feel the need to do a little 9V is because we're based in California and we have so many, I was kind of saying this earlier, we have so many minerals in our water here that if I don't kind of like overcorrect that a little bit for Stephanie, she is going to just suck it up with that cuticle being open, right? Like after we highlight, we really wanna make sure we're sealing down the cuticle. So we could do a clear through her ends and then kind of a little 10 NW 9V stitch through the mid. And I really think that's all she's gonna need. Her maintenance at home, I would only let her use the Joyco Blonde Life Brightening or actually probably probably the brightening every now and then or if she really was feeling like she was getting warm over time, which she won't, you can see this is kind of her pre-lightened, I would only let her use the uh, Blonde Life Violet. The color balance one would be way too intense on Stephanie's hair. So make sure that you are also educating your client on their at-home care. You know, I know that if some of us are big retail people, you know, we like our retail commission and all of that, but regardless, even if you're not a big seller, you still need to make sure you're educating your client. You know, this is your work and it's only gonna make that much more work for you if you're not being mindful of what they're doing at home. So really make sure you're still talking about it I know sometimes it gets uncomfortable to talk retail, but it's not about selling it to them. 
It's about, you know, the work that you just created. And you want to make sure that, you know, they're not spending all this money to get their color done to then only go home and ruin it and then blame it on you, right? That happens too. So I always make sure I talk to my clients, do they have a filter at home? You know, for those of us that live in areas where we don't have good water, do they have a filter at home? You know, how often are they washing? All of that. Okay, let me show you kind of that completed back through there so you guys can kind of see what's happening and how we're starting to lift. Again, look at how beautiful those ends are gonna be. And then once those are dry, you know, I'm pretty confident that they'll be okay. If you needed to, I keep a K-Pack spray with me and I'll kind of spray those ends if I need to and wipe them if it's like not drying, but it's already done. Rather than trying to go through and like wipe individual strands, you know, you really just wanna, that's why I do light developers and kind of go from there. Okay, let's move to the side and the top because I don't wanna keep you guys forever. This isn't rocket science application, right? But I just wanna speak to each section a little bit. So let me do one section here through the side. And again, this is all about how our hair falls. I'm less about doing an intentional diagonal back and, and horizontal here or anything like that or diagonal all the way. I'm really looking to see where her hair falls. And with Steph, she pulls her hair up so, so much and it looks like you have a little wave to your mm -hmm. hair. So see how it kind of pushes back away from her hairline and this is just her air dried hair. So if I'm sitting here and I'm doing this and I'm really over directing it all back, it doesn't really give me a good visual of where it's gonna fall. So I'm gonna actually take Steph's sides here and I'm gonna kind of let those sides fall out and I'm gonna kind of give those little pieces just a little kiss through there. We'll go higher as we work towards the front, but I wanna see where this is gonna fall and kind of divide that up. I'm gonna do, just do cream lightener through here. I start low and then I can kind of feather up from there. And I'm gonna work that front side is going to be the side I'm gonna take a little higher up. I just sort of switch my finger pattern. I'm going up. And then we'll take this little guy that's kind of above and I'm gonna take him a tiny bit higher. This section's a little bit thicker. You can see like thicker at the base, but look at my density. By the time I'm down here, it's a lot skinnier. So I'm confident taking that whole thing versus like, you know, if you pictured that in a foil, you wouldn't take that whole chunk ever, right? So this is where it's a, definitely a softer result and I'm doing that based on how our hair is falling. It's gonna kind of, so it's just gonna add this beautiful little bright piece right to where she falls naturally. Make sure you wipe your hands real good before you grab that next section. You don't wanna have to go back through. And now I'm gonna zigzag back from here. So really it's not a lot of sectioning. And then we'll do one piece right behind there for some depth. And then we're gonna add back in there. But when I'm visually, when I'm doing this again, see how much this kind of pushes back? I really don't need to start my lightning until kind of the mid through there. That one's real dark right here. Well, real dark for stuff. So I'm gonna do the 20 volume with my powder just through that mid and then I'll switch on those ends, because see how much that dens density changes? This is where your tools come into play. Even in a foil, I do this, you guys. I change my lightener, so then see how much thinner we are down there. I put just the cream down there with 10 volume. All those oils make such a difference. Same thing, kind of come back here, and I'm gonna gradually now work backwards with my angle. Okay, we'll go 20 at the top again, higher in the front. So I'll make sure, we took some good before pictures of Stephanie's hair. I'll make sure we get some good afters for Joyco to share. And I can share, are there really no questions? So far, no. No uh -huh. questions. You guys just already know what to do. 
kind of drop that in there. Okay, let me skip ahead really quick to the front hairline. So I'll come back and address this. I would kind of keep working through. But I wanted to show you guys that same thought process through the crown and how I would section this out. Because again, I want to, I don't want this to be perfect. So I'm gonna pull out our hairline, just again with my fingers, kind of at a V a little bit, little diagonal back, nothing's perfect. And I'm going to kind of treat that hairline the same way that I did right in here. So all that would be considered hairline stuff. Going through the back like this, I'm gonna take the, the back part of her head, sorry, stop to spin you, and I'm gonna continue with my zigzagging section like this across the back. Okay, I could probably do this entire top in three sections. Okay, so we'd do a zig back, zigzag back this direction. We'd probably do a zigzag back one more. And now with this top, I'm gonna start splitting this just for easier control and so I can get a little bit higher. I'll zigzag now this way. Okay, so we'll have a section that falls here. Go here again, section that falls here, and then we'll switch and we'll go to the other side. And that's just so for fluidity. However she's tossing her hair, that way she's always gonna have a little sparkle happening. Now if you guys are balayage artists and you are really good at going up there and you know getting these pieces nice and bright and tight, then I totally encourage you to keep doing that. It's so, so beautiful when you can get a soft balayage happening at the top. If you're not and you're new to all of this, right, I really encourage you to stay a little bit lower because there's nothing worse than having bleed spots and then you're like, oh my gosh, I could cry. I just, you know, now have to go back and fix these. But this palm painting is such a perfect way to go in and practice all of that. And then again, with your film, you can kind of use this to protect her face as well when you start to get through here. And we'll lay that down this direction. So let me do a couple pieces through here. If you guys have any questions, please ask away. Otherwise, we will jump off, let you guys have your day, and I'll make sure I post some before and after photos of Steph's beautiful sun-kissed hair. Somebody wants to know if you would do the same technique for curly hair. Yeah, oh my gosh, I love that you asked that. That's actually in my notes. Um, yes, this is my favorite on curly hair. And the only thing different with the sectioning is I don't brush the curls before, okay? Like really let them live and, and maybe encourage your client to come in with their hair naturally curly. Um, and I kind of will go off of their curl pattern more than anything. So I'll do, you know, if, if, if their hair, you know how the curls like coming right out the head, like try to keep those together as best as possible. And then you can kind of create your pieces from that. Um, and it's seriously so perfect on curly hair. I love it so much. Okay, I'm kind of go, I did one little front piece there. We're gonna do the one behind it as well and then one more and that's gonna kind of be her little face framing i'm back to my cream but now i'm going to start dropping these okay again like don't try to pack in a bunch right in here this look this technique is not about having a full money piece this is literally to have some beautiful sun-kissed pieces right on her face that will grow out so so soft if I don't see Steph for another six months, it's going to be okay. Right, Steph? <laughs> so, and we'll do one more, but I'm keeping these very skinny through here. And I'm going to keep just continuing to drop that lower and lower with my cream lightener only. Um, so, yes, curly-haired people, it's great. Virgin hair is great, especially for, you know, when you're learning for your first time. Um, really young girls that have never had their hair color, this is a great first step for them too. Um, I think when people have all over one color, we have a tendency to, um, it's hard, right, to create that natural look first. You end up feeling like you're doing 50,000 highlights because if you just space them out, you get real chunky, right, and like real dimensional. 
So I think it's so, so important um, for that first initial one. Like this kind of gives you your first foundational, you know, lightning service with that client. Okay, so this is a pretty big section at the top, but I'm really softening. And because I want to stay low here and just kind of sun kiss now these pieces. Like that's all I want for her front little hairline. And pulling, this is a little bit denser and a darker piece. So I switched back to my 20 and my powder. This is all cream through that front. And then just barely touching those ends, not much on that. All right, and I'm gonna keep on working. All right, you guys, so if you have any other questions, please, you are always welcome to send me a DM. Um, my Instagram is jill901, the numbers. Um, always available to help as best I can. Hopefully, too, some of you guys will get to meet soon in person. Joyco's traveling again. We're excited to meet you guys. Um, and hopefully, you guys are going to some shows this year. Get some in-person education happening and get us all excited about our jobs all over again.